prompted me what prompted me to become an artist was I have thought about this a lot over the years and it's definitely early on in my life when I was thinking about what would I do as a uh, adult I didn't actually ever want to do something that I had to retire from and that's that's actually a, a strange thing to think about when you're choosing what you want to do as a, as a person but I didn't want to have to ever retire and then just pick up another thing as an elderly person so I thought well, I was already very interested in creativity and being an imaginative little person and then I thought well this could work because I probably won't retire for if I have art in my in my world I didn't I'm not suggesting that I thought I'll make art my job because I won't have to retire, but I thought you'd always it'd be best if you had something that you could carry through with you all the way into your older life um, that you've always got at uh, at at your beck and call that can um, allow you to just go into your own um, world and and explore your own imagination. So I was an, an imaginative child. I liked making things and creating things, and I think that married in nicely with being an artist so a lot of people in my um, early years have said why on earth would you have been an artist? You, you can't be an artist you don't have any skills you're not really very good at any of that stuff so that was kind of the uh, part of the driving force that I was thinking to myself well I can if I want to and I'll just get better I'll just keep trying so I'm I'm trying very hard to be uh uh, a more capable painter, and I'm only just starting to really uh, understand what I can um, achieve here. So, yeah. That I have a great interest and a great respect for Indigenous artists, tribal art, um, and the artists of those cultures and communities are very, um, uh, um, very inspiring to me because it's the, the doing of the actual work for them a lot of the time it's especially in this I know more about in Australian indigenous art than many other places around the world but I love the idea that it's it's imparting this the cultural knowledge and that's storytelling so I do like stories to exist in my work but it's more the viewer putting their own stories into it but the indigenous art um, uh, core of their belief I think is that they're they're imparting the energy of the past through their work um, and the energy of just expressing um, just the beauty of being human and so indigenous art is a great inspiration to me but also um, of course one of my mentors William Robinson um, one of Australia's greatest artists I believe who married um, really quite successfully um, the structural elements of being a great painter such as mastering of colour and tone, light um, but also um, a slightly I guess it could be considered a spiritual element where there is um, an exploration of the meaning of why we are here, what what is our relationship with our natural environment or our physical environment but how do we um, place ourselves in 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 the center of that um, and that's something that I one day I hope to be able to cr create sweeping glorious large works like William Robinson, June Tupikoff's and other great artists, um, Australian artists I love um, there's a great artist from this I think he was the 50s, 60s, 70s, Robert Diebenkorn from um, California, those sort of artists that um, embraced the love of urban life and urban landscapes um, that really gave me the uh, impetus to continue painting subject that some part artists in the early part of my career were saying, well would you paint old houses or old buildings in, in well it's not the building that I'm painting, it's the essence and the spirit of the building and the people that create that spirit so I'll, I guess I, I paint architecture um, as a symbol I guess a symbol of um, 
you know, hu modern humans. Well, I've got um, one, um, one little, um, I guess it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a phrase or a bit of writing that I, I might read out for you. Just, it's an art critic who's written recently. This is a little example of the sort of thing that I see art and my sort of art being of um, use in describing. So the distinction of subject and object is suspended. The work is not an object, but a matrix of meaning into which our consciousness penetrates, a mould into which our experiences take shape and discovers itself anew. The subject is not a self or of self or ego any longer. So these sort of things are, you know, that sort of feeling that putting something that you relate to through my eyes um, out into the world and then others who... Um, for whatever reason, can relate to that. They can place their own experience into that that mould um, to create their own, um, you know, representation and conjure up their own memories of what it means to them. So, I think it's uh, it's a simple but um, can be complex um, way of bringing that about. <laughs>